The countdown is on to Prime Day, which is actually two days beginning Tuesday. Amazon's promising more than one million big discounts on its own products like the... consideration provided by happening now i was just shocked and hurt saddened her father was a victim of theft the suspect his own caretaker and there could be other victims what she stole and what other families could learn from this after weeks of negotiations and no agreement the president has signed off on a new plan to get the economy going the price tag and what's next before businesses can see some relief one week ago, he was hospitalized with COVID-19. Now, President Trump wants to get back on the campaign trail. I'm Karen Cape in Washington with a look at some of the important questions around the president's health. The holiday shopping season is starting early. Amazon launching Prime Day this Tuesday and the competition getting in on the act. We're closely tracking Hurricane Delta as it's moments away from landfall along the Louisiana coastline. We'll have that, but also talk about the record challenging heat that's moving in behind it. All that coming right up. The News at 5 starts right now. New at 5, this woman is charged tonight with theft of the elderly, $2,500 to $30,000 worth of jewelry. San Antonio police say Priscilla Mitchell is suspected in a handful of other cases that they know about and possibly even more. They don't. They say she targeted seniors with dementia and memory loss, the nursing facilities where she worked. Jesse de Goyado tells us that the daughter of one of the victims credits the facility where her father has been for helping SAPD make the arrest. Darwin Dunlap wasn't smiling when he first told his daughter something was missing. Then she asked, Dad, where's your ring? And he looked down at his hand and he said, I don't know. Now facing two felony theft charges, San Antonio police say 29-year-old Priscilla Mitchell allegedly stole his wedding band. She'd been a recent hire at the memory care community on Stone Oak where Dunlap lives. And she's suspected in a theft at this facility where a diamond-studded wedding ring was taken off an 85-year-old woman with dementia. Mitchell also is under investigation in four similar criminal cases and possibly more to come. Not that you would, but if you could, what would you say to this woman? Just why? Why? Why would you do that? Among the best ways for families to protect vulnerable loved ones, according to AARP Texas, do your research, check their quality record and how the facility handles cases of theft. And if there's a high staff turnover, 
that if you have a lot of people coming in and out of the facility and turning over, that makes theft easier to occur. Families, she says, expect that loved ones like Darwin Dunlap and their belongings will be kept safe. It's really important that facilities hold true to that to that commitment. Now wearing the wedding band that he wore when he married his wife of 51 years. He was comforted that he had it back. So that meant everything. It was it was something to see that recognition in his in his eyes. Jesse Degollado, KSAT 12 News. SAPD is urging anyone who thinks that they may have been a victim as well to contact the Property Crimes Unit. We have information about how you can try to protect your loved ones meantime from thefts. That's on our website, KSAT.com. Have you seen this woman and child? San Antonio police looking for them. They say the little girl on your screen was last seen in the 2900 block of West Commerce. She's believed to be in the company of 21-year-old Kimberly Mata, who is also missing. If you know where they are, call SAPD's Missing Persons Unit at the number on your screen. The number to call, 210-207-7660. A woman arrested early this morning after authorities say she stabbed her boyfriend during an argument. It happened at a home on Altius Pass. That's in West Bear County near Marbach and Loop 1604. Deputies say the couple was fighting and at some point the woman stabbed the man in the chest. He is expected to be OK. No word on what charges the woman will face. The Bear County Sheriff's Office warning people about a scam phone call scam that may show up as the sheriff's office on your caller ID, but it's not. The sheriff's office has received multiple reports about scammers contacting people and then demanding money for outstanding warrants in order to avoid arrest. Here's a voicemail one person received. Yes, this is Deputy Avery Walker here at the Bear County Sheriff's Office. I'm calling to discuss some confidential legal matters. The sheriff's office says it does not take payment by phone or threaten an arrest for payment. If you do receive a call like this, contact the sheriff's office at 210-335-6000. We are about three weeks away from the presidential election and already several million ballots have been cast. The president who was forced off the campaign trail due to coronavirus is now getting ready to restart his campaign rallies soon. Karen Capa in Washington to explain how that'll happen. Karen. Yeah, Ursula, remember it was just a week ago that we were all looking at the White House lawn as President Trump took off on Marine One for Walter Reed Medical Center for more extensive treatment for his COVID symptoms. Now, the White House says he'll hold an event with hundreds of guests at the White House tomorrow and on Monday, he'll head back out on the campaign trail. President Trump wants to get out of COVID isolation and back on the campaign trail. I think I'm going to try doing a rally on Saturday night if we can, if we have enough time to put it together. But we want to do a rally in Florida, probably in Florida on Saturday night. Might come back and do one in Pennsylvania in uh, the following night. But even the White House admits that timeline could be tough. When he wants to be out there logistically, whether tomorrow is possible, uh, it, it would be tough. And instead of packed venues, the president may have to settle for virtual rallies, like one with conservative talk show host Rush Limbaugh. This, sir, is a mega, mega rally. Inside the White House, President Trump has veered on a variety of issues, including the next COVID relief legislation. Tuesday, he halted stimulus talks between White House negotiators and Congress. But Friday tweeted, COVID relief negotiations are moving along. Go big. While President Trump recovers from coronavirus, Joe Biden and running mate Kamala Harris are out talking to voters about COVID-19. Joe has had a plan for COVID at least since March. He's been talking about this. He knows what this means and the kind of leadership that is required to get, in, get on top of it and get in control. President Trump says his coronavirus infection is under control, but his team says they will wait to hold events until it is safe. We're just trying to keep up with the president who's ready to go and ready to be out there um, as soon as he gets the OK from his doctor. And from what we know about tomorrow's scheduled event, the president will address the crowd from the balcony at the White House. And on Monday, he'll be heading to the Orlando area for that rally in a crucial battleground state. Ursula? Karen, now that the president has made a counter offer on the next round of coronavirus relief, where do things stand now? 
Well, Ursula, even though the president has made this counteroffer to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, the two sides are pretty far apart in terms of hundreds of millions of dollars. The president's counteroffer today, about $1.8 trillion. The bill that House Democrats passed last week, about $2.2 trillion. And a lot of times it's not necessarily about the price tags of these legislation, but what is actually inside these bills. So some sticking points for the two sides include Speaker Pelosi and her staff wanting to see more from the administration in terms of more concrete plans for ending the coronavirus pandemic and how to get the United States out of this. There are also some sticking points when it comes to aid to state and local governments who have struggled mightily during the coronavirus pandemic and now face huge budget shortfalls. Even though the talks have resumed again after President Trump on tweeted on Tuesday that he would not engage in further talks, the Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell still says it is unlikely that this legislation will get through his chamber and to the president's desk before Election Day, Ursula. Thank you, Karen Capa, reporting from a loud White House tonight. Now to the latest on Hurricane Delta. We are just a few hours away from when that storm is expected to make landfall. ABC's Elwin Lopez is on the ground in Lafayette. Fast moving Delta closing in on the Pelican State. It's better to be overprepared than underprepared. Right now we have a category three go, uh, storm in the Gulf. That's what we're preparing for. Louisiana, Mississippi and Alabama all under a state of emergency. This storm's path similar to that of Hurricane Laura. It is very clear that Southwest Louisiana is gonna get more of a punch from this than we would like to see. Tarps and piles of debris, a common sight in hard hit Lake Charles. Still reeling weeks later, residents now racing to get out of Delta's way. And I drive around, I see all this debris and it's pretty rough after tonight, tomorrow, that stuff's gonna be blown all over the place again. And in Lafayette, people have boarded up, lining businesses with sandbags. You, you just hope for the best and prepare for the worst. There's gonna be some worry no matter what, but we've been through it before. We just take it one thing at a time. Forecasters warn we could see up to 11 feet of storm surge up Vermilion Bay. Now millions on alert from Mississippi to Texas. In this parish, we're under curfew until 8 a.m. Saturday morning, and city officials tell me that people here are taking this one seriously because of what happened in nearby Lake Charles when Hurricane Laura hit just six weeks ago. In Lafayette, Louisiana, Owen Lopez, ABC News. And that's one of the issues they're dealing with is they're still trying to recover from Hurricane Laura in that part of Louisiana. So many places are still without solid roofs and fully solid structures. And then you add some wind and, of course, a lot of rain on top of that. And it's just not a good situation. So very unfortunate for them. Landfall is very similar to where Hurricane Laura made landfall in late August. All right, around here, it's very quiet. You can clearly see Hurricane Delta, Category 2 storm. Luckily, it has weakened a little bit, but still near the center of the circulation. Some winds around 100 miles per hour with some gusts up to 125. Again, that's confined to a smaller area closer to the center of the storm. And actually, you look at this, and here's the eye, the eye wall coming ashore right now. So landfall is just moments away. Once the center of that eye is on land, then there we have landfall. So it's moments away way, but they're feeling the effects of it right now. We're going to talk more about this. Take a look at the winds and rainfall potential with it as well. Temperature wise around town, low 90s, upper 80s, kind of what we've had the past couple of days. 90 in Mica, just south of Lavernia, now at 87. We'll talk about our record challenging heat for the weekend coming up, Devin. All right, Adam, thank you. And sticking with the weather, we are talking hurricanes and heat. How does climate change play into this? It's a question that KSAT meteorologists Katie Blake and Sarah Spivey address in this week's episode of KSAT Explains. They're going to break down what forest management has to do with the western wildfires and how winds, heat, and drier conditions contribute to the fires and what makes hurricane frequency and intensity more intense. You can watch episode 13 of KSAT Explains on the KSAT TV app. It's found on your streaming device. It was postponed earlier this year, pushed back because of the pandemic. But if you've been waiting to get a Fiesta fix for 2020, some of your Nyosa favorites are coming to La Vita in November. Yeah, the Conservation Society of San Antonio organizing its 10th annual Fall Heritage Festival on the grounds of La Vita. Now, while it's not Nyosa as we know and love, the celebration will bring booths like Mr. Chicken and Maria's Tortillas to a familiar space along with music and a learning opportunity for guests. 
will also be able to really showcase the cultural heritage of the city and La Vieta, which what we like to do during Neosa too, but unfortunately it's hard to really take that in when there's 18,000 people elbow to elbow. So that said, <laughs> attendance will be limited to 1,000 people. Tickets are $125 a person. They are all inclusive, meaning food and drink is included. If you're planning on attending, there's an opportunity to give back as well to the San Antonio Food Bank by donating non-perishables. You can find more information about the festival and the precautions right now on KSAT.com. And a reminder, there is a flu shot drive this weekend. Our KSAT community partners are working with Bear County Precinct 2 Commissioner Justin Rodriguez to hold the drive tomorrow, October 10th. It's from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at Nelson Wolf Stadium. Registration is required. You can find out more information on how to do that right now on KSATcommunity.com. All right, it's called Prime Day, but Amazon isn't the only one aiming to get your online business next week. Whether you're getting a kickstart to holiday shopping or if you're in search of something for yourself, we have tips on how to get the best steals and deals on Prime Day. New at five, it's prime time. Amazon's big shopping palooza that normally is in July, but it's been pushed to October. And now other big retailers are getting in on the action, pretty much moving up Black Friday. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz says calendar confusion aside, the competition for your holiday dollars is about to begin. The countdown is on to Prime Day, which is actually two days beginning Tuesday. Amazon's promising more than one million big discounts on its own products like the Echo and more. We're also going to see a lot of tech deals and a lot of deals on home goods and kitchen appliances and toys especially as well because Amazon is using Prime Day this year to kick off the holiday shopping season. Samantha Gordon, the deal hunting guru for Consumer Reports, says there's a method to the preseason madness. So first of all, the reason that they're doing this is to spread out the, the load of orders so that shipping doesn't get slowed down because of that. We it's easy to get sucked into the hype. So Gordon says, ignore the impulse to just click and buy. So it's really good to do your research ahead of time. Figure out what you want and need now. Even put it in your cart and wait for a deal to pop. And of course you want to get the best price. If you use a site like Camel Camel Camel, it will actually research the price history of a product. And check out the competition. Walmart is having its big save event Sunday through Thursday. And coinciding with Prime Day, Target is promoting its deal days. And Best Buy is launching Black Friday on Tuesday, 45 days early. But who's counting? The deals start earlier every year. So I've always said Black Friday starts on November 1st. And this year it starts on Prime Day. Prime Day is only for Prime members. If you don't want to commit the cash, there is a free trial. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. I am watching that landfall right now. It is happening in Lafayette. Yeah, your old stomping grounds, right? Yeah. Uh, Louisiana there. And uh, it's unfortunately basically making landfall right where Laura did as well. And they're still recovering from Laura. There's piles of debris still scattered all over the place, still cleaning up. And then they've got this to deal with. Luckily, this storm is significantly weaker, but still we're talking a category two hurricane. So some high winds and a lot of rainfall and a storm surge as well associated with it. So let's get right to it. Quiet weather around here. Take a look at the visible satellite imagery and we just have some scattered fair weather clouds. But then you go off to the east and there you can clearly see the well defined eye of Hurricane Delta as it moves north north northeast at 14 miles per hour. Latest information indicates winds of 100 miles per hour near the center and then some gusts up to 125. And it's basically making landfall as we speak. The northern eye wall has already moved on shore, so the center of that eye is about to make it on shore as well. And see right there, Cameron, Louisiana, Lake Charles, Lafayette, Lake Charles, of course, slammed by Hurricane Laura. And then as they're still recovering, you just compound it with all this rain, some wind, of course, but a lot of rain and people still have tarps over their roofs and not really secured at structures still at this time. And then you add this on top of it, unfortunately, taking a look at the actual wind measurements from anemometers on the ground and we're gusting up to 61, 68 even 
Port Arthur gusts and Pecan Island here. I did see gusts in excess of 74 miles per hour. So hurricane strength, it's not reporting right now. Either it's communication error or the station got knocked out, but that shouldn't be a high enough wind to knock out the station. So anyway, here's a look at the wind radii. The red indicates the hurricane force winds. Okay, they do expand out a little bit from the center of that storm, but as we as it makes landfall soon and through the rest of the evening, it's going to weaken, of course, interacting with land and then that wind field shrinks down as well. So even by later on tonight, 10 p.m., we're looking at just for the most part tropical storm force winds and of course a lot of rainfall. Speaking of rainfall, you look at the big swath here through Louisiana. This is additional rainfall. It's been coming down hard for a good chunk of the day and they'll see another five inches plus right up the center and the eastern portion of, of Louisiana. Of course, none of that excess moisture moves our way. It all gets veered eastward, basically east of the Mississippi. All right, I mentioned Laura. Here's a comparison. You look at the historical track of Laura in pink and Delta in white here. They, they basically paralleled each other in their track and then converged and intersected here right at landfall, at their point of landfall. So interesting situation here. But as I said before, it's unfortunate, of course, for the folks around there that are still recovering. 91, that's our current reading. We topped out at 92. That was our high temperature today. Now we're at 91. Some humidity in the air, dew point is 68. But behind Delta, we're going to see even hotter temperatures. We're feeling the heat now. Hondo's 96, 95 Catula, Pleasanton 92. But this upward trend continues mid 90s easily tomorrow we will be right near 100 for the high temperature on Sunday. And as I was saying yesterday and last night, it's that time of year where the pool water has really cooled off in neighborhood pools. You, it actually may be feel refreshing this weekend as we'll have some record challenging heat. Yes, record challenging heat as we go through the upcoming weekend and the next week still above average. Not a bad night for some football, Adam. Not at all. And in fact, we have our Greg Simmons live from Converse at Rutledge Stadium for some BGC. Let's go. You got it right. The music is fired up. We're ready to play high school football tonight on a Friday night. When we come back, it's the big game and our big game coverage tonight. Smithson Valley gets Wagner. This is their season opener. And also, we come back, the Lakers can win it all tonight. Welcome live to Rutledge Stadium here in Converse for the big game and our big game covers tonight. This is number two Wagner Thunderbirds kicking off their season tonight with a district throwdown against the six ranked and undefeated Smithson Valley Rangers. Now due to the COVID-19 pandemic, this is the first game of the season for the Wagner Thunderbirds. It's also the first game back in 6A football. In fact, we're making it all the way to the state finals in Class 5A last year. And if that wasn't enough, it's also the first game for L.J. Butler back with the birds after he tried to transfer to Judson and was denied. For the Smithson Valley Rangers, they've been able to kick off their 2020 season by going 2-0 with a 45-27 victory over Clean Harker Heights, a 31-6 win against Madison. And now this is their district opener in 27-6A. Starting against, you know, district you want to have things going well you of course don't want to lose any games but of course the first district game you want to put good things out there so you know the teams that you're ahead of preparing for you know they know that's you know we're serious so of course they're a new team but we know they're pretty talented so we're hoping to beat them and you know carry things on the next couple games they're a pretty good team you know we're paying attention to detail and doing all the little things right so we're going to be ready for the team i was very excited you know big dudes uh, big competition you know it's giving us a challenge for this week all right, Smithson Valley taking on Wagner here at Rutledge. Judson will be in New Bravo. Steele at East Central. Layman at Southwest at Dragon Stadium. Johnson will visit Lee at Comalanda. Brandeis and MacArthur at Heroes. O'Connor, Marshall at Ferret. Staff in Harlan over at Gus. Pleasanton will be in Bernie. Southside will be at Somerset. San Antonio Christian at Antonian. It'll be St. Paul the second against St. Anthony at Benson at UIW Campus. Central Catholic against St. Thomas in Houston. And Shiner St. Paul at Holy Cross. That is over at Wheatley Heights. Our big game coverage road trip as photographer Eddie Latigo headed out east into the country. His first stop will be in Laverne to see if the Bears can claw their way past Uvalde. Then it's down to Stockdale to catch the Brahmas against Carn City. And then over to Nixon Smiley to see which Mustangs get harnessed against Natalia. The Los Angeles Lakers can claim 
their 17th NBA title tonight if they can beat the Heat. In order to do that, they have game four on Tuesday night that they won, 102-96 to go up three games to one in the best of seven series. A must win for Miami if they want a game six. Tip-off tonight is at eight live right here on KSAT 12. We're just getting word. Cowboys star left tackle Tyron Smith season over. He's having neck surgery. Join us for all the updates tonight, BGC.com and on Twitter and all the highlights on the night beat. Live in Converse, Greg Simmons, KSAT 12 Sports. All Thank right. you so much, Greg. All right, we'll be right back. Quiet this evening, patchy fog to start the day tomorrow. Otherwise, sunny and hot into the mid 90s. We'll be right near 100 as we get into Sunday afternoon. So summer like this weekend with nothing but sunshine. And then next week, we'll trim back temperatures a little bit.